Yang Jun decides that Misa still needs his protection, and he's not afraid to do whatever it takes to make that happen. Unluckily for him, and luckily for us, it backfires on him, putting him in a situation that gives him all sorts of ideas. But there are some serious issues to tackle as well, as the past can't wait any more and demands to be heard. Episode 12 Recap Young Jun shows up on Mieso's doorstep, having decided that if she doesn't want to stay at his house so he can protect her from bad dreams, then he'll just move in with her for a few days. She stammers that her apartment is too tiny and only has one bed, but he reminds her that she turned down offered to let her stay at his place, which has plenty of rooms. He's got her there, he. He pushes his way in and gets busy putting his stuff away. He notes that she has plenty of space for his things because she doesn't have much, and she tells him haughtily that she used her money to pay off her family debts, not go shopping. At one point he knocks something off her vanity, and they both reach for it at the same time, causing an uncomfortable moment. Young Jun stands very close to Miso and tells her that the reason he's here tonight, is just to be by her side so she can sleep comfortably. She visibly relaxes, and he gives her a gift of fancy foot bath salts. They head to the bathroom to soak their feet and relax, but Miso doesn't have a bathtub, so it's not nearly as romantic as Young Jun pictured, lol. When they finish, they pad back out the living room and decide it's bedtime. Misa jumps under the covers, and she's startled when Young Jun climbs in beside her. Young Jun graces her with the privilege of his arm as a pillow, but she can't relax, so she cranks the head of the bed up and turns on the TV, to Young Jun's surprise. When they end up on the sexy kissing scene from Oh Hey Young again, Miso quickly switches to the soccer game. Young Jun asks if she's uncomfortable to be in the same bed, and she admits she doesn't think she can sleep like this. He suggests a glass of wine to relax them, so they head up to the roof together. Young Jun thought ahead enough to bring a bottle of wine, but he didn't bring a wine key, and Miso doesn't own one. She says she saw a trick once, and she borrows Young Jun's shoe, fits the base of the wine bottle inside, and smacks the sole on the wall. The cork doesn't pop like it's supposed to, and Young Jun informs her dryly, Did you know that's a 200,001 bottle of wine? Oh, oops. They're summoned downstairs when a neighbor starts bellowing Young Jun's license plate number. He's parked in her space, and she notes his expensive car and assumes he lives here, and gives him a lecture about living within his means. She says her own son is humble and just managed to land a job at Yum Young Group, and Young Jun informs her that it's his company, only to get accused of being drunk. He. Annoyed, Misa decides that Young Jun was right in the first place, they'd both be happier at his house. On the way, Young Jun asks if she thinks he's too fussy, and her resounding silence answers the question. He admits that imagining her experiencing the same horrors he did after their ordeal worries him, and she says she understands, which is why she's going with him to his place. Young Jun's house also has the convenience of a guest room, which Misa takes advantage of, to Young Jun's disappointment. But as soon as she tucks herself in, she grows a little scared again. She turns on the light and gets the dickens frightened out of her by a reflection of Young Jun, not gonna lie, I jumped a foot too. He says he's unsettled when he can't see her, and asks if he can sleep next to her to make sure she's okay. He jumps in bed, assuring her that he's not thinking of anything but his concern for her. The fact that they're in bed, together, has them both wondering what to say to get over the weird moment. Consulting his genius brain for an idea, Young Jun blurts out, Do you want me to sing a lullaby? P-W-A-H-A-H-A, he looks horrified at the words coming out of his own mouth. Desperate for something, anything, to lessen the awkwardness, Miso agrees, and luckily for them both, Young Jun turns out to have a really sweet voice. It grows stronger as the words of the song remind him of falling for Miso. It works, and Miso falls asleep. Young Jun spends a minute just looking at her and stroking her hair, and he gives her forehead a kiss. She snuggles into his chest sleepily, wrapping an arm around him, and the poor guy doesn't get a wink of sleep all night. Well, you brought this onto yourself. His nerves are shot by the time Misa wakes up, and he tells her he can't guarantee tonight. He stumbles out of the room, followed by a little devil that chuckles evilly at the thought of another night with Miso. Hey, he sends the naughty-minded devil to go bother her. Miso gets ready for the day, wondering why Young Jun said he can't guarantee tonight. Suddenly the cheeky little devil pops up, and she realizes what he meant by that. She tells it to go away, because she doesn't have such unseemly thoughts. 
Sua. She tries to make an omelette for young Jun to thank him for taking care of her, but it falls apart. He teases her for repaying good with evil, but he insists on eating it since she made it. He doesn't drink the coffee when he notices a crack in the cup, and Misa remembers his superstition that it means something bad will happen today. He decides to be careful today, but Miso falls off her heel as they're leaving for work. She says she didn't twist her ankle, but she did scratch her heel, which is another bad superstitious sign. They both complain about their bad luck omens while carpooling to work with Yushik and Chiel. Yushik says he doesn't believe in such things, because he saw a crow, cracked his cup, and scratched his heel before work, but he got good news that their pharmaceutical department reported a new medicine development going well, Young Jun, that's because I'm competent. Young Jun tells Yushik to cancel his dinner plans, because a school who buy of theirs named Sung Ki is having surgery for lung cancer and he wants to visit him. Yushik advises everyone to take care of his health like he does, and when Young Jun says he's too obsessive about it, he says it's better than dying of health issues. Then he makes himself sad at the thought of losing people he cares about, which reminds him of seeing his ex-wife yesterday. He tells them about running into Seo Jin and accusing her of having a new boyfriend when it was just her cousin, wailing that he probably lost the chance to make up with her. She calls him out of the blue, and when he answers, Seo Jin says she's been feeling bad about their fight. She asks if she was at the restaurant because he missed her, and he admits he was hoping to see her. Seo Jin asks if he has time tonight for drinks, and he nearly bursts into happy tears as he accepts. He asks if they can meet late since he has to go to the hospital because Sung Ki is in critical condition. There he backpedals hard, realizing too late that Sung Ki means penis, and he just made it sound like he's got some sort of dysfunction. But he's too late, Seo Jin has hung up. Yushik wonders which one jinxed him, the crow, the cracked mug, or his heel, and Young Jun and Misa say in unison, all of them. Yushik tells them to be good to each other so they don't regret losing each other when it's too late. At office, Miso brings Young Jun his schedule for the week, but he wants to talk about what Yushik said about not losing each other. He says he's been worried about her leaving him, because, you'd regret it so much. Lol. He says she should be good to him, and she grits her teeth and retorts that they should be good to each other. GR is in a plan.